With the addition of this new async to promise transformation function, I'd like to give a shout out to Johan for suggesting the addition of it, and of course Dale Francis for actually implementing it. So what does this new thing get us? So, for instance, we're going to start off with this fork function that's just a little helper that's going to call fork on a given async. And as we see here, if we uh, run this, we'll get a resolved 33, or we'll, we can do a rejected 33. And either way, it's going to resolve or reject that. So, a lot of times when you're using an async, you're typically implementing it in JavaScript inside of some promise flow. So what this can allow you to do is naturally transform any async into the pr expected promise that you have in your flow. To get an example of this, let's go ahead and just comment this stuff out. And we'll work mostly with uh, uh, just the promise stuff now. And we have this simple promise chain that will uh, resolve with the value of 33. And then using this async to promise, we're going to wrap this add 10, which is going to take a number and return a result. So when we save this, we see that it actually transformed that async into a promise that could be then thened ha, into the existing promise chain. Um, and if we want, uh, we could see, uh, uh, to check out the catch, I should say, we'll do reject. And as we see here, it's going to hit this catch and result in a rejected. So as with any of these functions, we can return an actual, uh, oh, I'm sorry, one more thing. So here we'll change this back to resolved. And then if this happens to be rejected, it's going to reject the promise chain like it did before. Um, except this time the reject's going to happen in the async or what hits this then. So say we run into a situation where we uh, will do promise.resolve and we're going to resolve with an actual uh, async. So what this is going to do, promise, is uh, instead of having a value or running it, this is just going to be a promise that will have an actual, and let's do this, promise, and that will be of an async e number, and here we'll have some error e. And that's, of course, going to be on the right side of the promise because they're flipped. So now when we run this, uh, type async to promise. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm sorry. So then we have to do a then add 10, which will throw it in there. And we see it will take this. Uh, and let's just go ahead and comment this out. So we see that inside of this promise, we're actually resolving with an async that has the function wrapping it. So what we can do is because we have the uh, async inside of the promise, we can just then on this async to promise and it's going to unwrap it and then do the natural transformation, fork it, and then give you back the value as expected. So again, I want to say thank you to Johan for suggesting this and Dale Francis for actually doing the implementation to get it in. Big ups goes to Dale Francis for the changes he made on the Crocs documentation landing page. He added a search bar here to make it easier to actually search in the Crocs documentation from the landing page. And also, many changes were made to the wording and the layout of the different sections here on the landing page. So again, thanks for all your hard work, Dale. I'd like to give a shout out to Dale Francis for adding the identity ADT to the documentation for Crocs. This now has been uh, fully documented and is ready for your perusal. Thanks again, Dale. I'd like to give a shout out to Dale Francis for adding a whole mess of flattening examples to some of the natural transformation functions. Uh, some of the ones that have been changed are mostly the sum type. So that's going to be your either to async, either to first, maybe to either, you know, uh, all, the, all the sum types in addition to pair or writer to pair. So again, thank you, Dale, for getting these examples in there.